I was definitely about to do the Halo theme, but then Jake started playing. It was amazing. Oh. Wait, let's let's freestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumford and Son song. Yeah, we did. That's it. I think the exact way that they do it. You have to add the claps in. Guys, yeah. welcome to the Bump and Stomp After Hours <laughs> podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. We hope your day's going well. And uh, well, welcome everybody. We're bumping. We're welcome stomping. Yourself. Who Jake, do we have today? You're wrong. This is the youngest podcast yeah. ever. Okay, this Dean, is the takeover. D so we have Jonah, Dean, and Fenner. Dean, I feel like he wants to get right into it. So I'm not going to stop this. Well, what do you want? I'm what just you, saying. What do you it's want? It's the youngest Dean? podcast of all time. There's never been a podcast younger than this, except really? for you. You out. You kind of slide the scales back in the. I, I, I bring the, the average ocean. back up. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> but, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, starting from what is this? The left, we got Jonah. Who oh, is? Should we do like name, birth year? Name, birth, birth sure, year. Let's do that. My name is Jonah. Yeah, and I was born in the year of nineteen ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. You're almost. You look terrible I hear now, for your age. I hear now when people <laughs> walk into bars, when they check your ID, they just have to look if it's the year two thousand. Yeah, making it easy. That's it. Damn. Yeah. It and is. It's super easy to remember my age too, because I just. It's for half the year. It's the year that it is is my age. Whoa! And then for the second half, I mean, you're even I never thought of that because I always forget yeah. how old I am. How old are you? Yeah. What, well, what my name is Dean, born? and I was born in 1997. Oof. So, wow. 97. Not, boy. not too far off, wow. but I do forget often how old I am. I'm tw 25, I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think. That's a good year, 25. Fenner? That's a good year. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. What is your name? Oh, okay. good year. My name is Fenner Thomas Lemmers Rockliffe. Wow. I was born. Don't give out your full name. June 19th, 1995. What's your social? Oh, My, they don't have it. He's Canadian. Yeah, we don't. We don't have a social. What is it? You guys have social security number? Yeah. Oh, yeah. FDR. Started. We're incredibly insecure in Canada. We don't have any social security. You guys don't have That's government good. numbers? We have social insurance numbers. Okay. Just you guys leave your doors <laughs> unlocked? We yeah. legitimately do. Yeah. Anyways. What year were you born? 1995, June 19th, 1995. That's my yeah. sister. It's 95. That's wow. great year. And every, so everyone just look at <laughs> Now you all look at me. So what do you got? So son? I'm Jake Watson. For those of you who haven't met me on the internet, I was born in 1986. 86? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're so old. You're so old, man. What was it like when everything was black and white? Dude, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> were there dinosaurs in your neighborhood? Yeah, Holy so we were on the classic debate of what, what, how to define the generations. Um, I think millennials grew up before the internet, or like the internet came along as with. they came up with it, sort yeah. of. Wait, so, but Z there was internet when you were a kid. Yeah, there, well, there was internet, but again, I was born in 86, so yeah. by the time... I was 10 years old by the time we got a personal computer in our house yeah. and then it had the 56 K dial up. And so it wasn't like you really like internet wasn't really as prolific, you know, obviously. So, um, but then I think the de defining feature for the generations would be, you know, everyone who grew up with the internet just being a, a in existence. Well, yeah. Well, so when I was 10 years old, that would have been when the iPhone came out. So that's yeah. So I was already in college. Yeah, yeah. that's the whoa. You were in college when I was ten years old. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> Damn, I went. Dude. I started college in 04. Damn, Damn dude. dude. Yeah, I was four. So you would be Gen. <laughs> I was four or five. Yeah, four and oh four. It means I was either yeah. four or five, depending on the time of the year. Mm. So um, that would make you Gen X, like the very end of Gen X, maybe. Yeah, like my sister. My I was the youngest of four, so they were kind of. My sister was born in seventy eight. Mm -hmm. So they they're kind of like that, and then I don't know if millennials are Gen X or millennials. If there's a defining factor there, I think millennials are after Gen X. So, but yeah. before Gen Z, Z yeah. yeah. So, so we're Gen Y. We were talking about this the other yeah. day because you're technically a millennial. Yeah, I'm like on the cusp though. Technically, so I'm just in that weird gray area. What I, what happens? I, here's the main, here's the main question <laughs> yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. to. What happens after Gen Z? Right. The what do you call that? The is that? Is that the death of the <laughs> oh, universe? Yeah. I don't think we're, I don't no, think we're done, prepared dude. to think We still have Gen Z. 
Yeah. Z. Well, that's Zed. in Canada. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, is that what you guys use for Z? Yeah, we there? don't say Z. We say Z. Oh, it's, okay. Well, that's we don't fine. have social security numbers. We say Z. Could we do very, what? Could we we could do weird. symbols? Gen. What seriously asterisk? is there? Is there? I don't a, think they have one. Is no. there a thing for this? Emojis? Because that would be what my children are. It's yeah. gonna be like. Right? I think they would still. Uh, maybe they're not. not Z. I hear people throw around iGen, which I don't know. Oh, that's iGen. iGen is like <laughs> brought to you by It's more Apple. of a moniker. I don't think it's like an official generation. <laughs> well, also they're well, not. Aren't we like, just going by letters this whole time? Yeah, you, we're changing it Because technically millennials are wise, so doesn't doesn't this just mean that we start back at A again? Well, but who? Because by the, there was twenty six generations ago, we yeah. don't need to worry about those guys. We can yeah. start back at A. We're not going to confuse anybody. I but, think in general we tend to like create far too minuscule categories. Because if you look at it in a macro sense, like the fact that we've come up with all these generations in the last like 50 years, we're just like freaking out. We're just like, oh, why? Z. There's been 50 like, generations well, no, in the last 50 like, years. That's yeah. the yeah. thing is we start with X, I think. Like before that, it's the baby boomers. So like yeah, there's so not, not all, it wasn't not really all letters, named so. like yeah. that. Yeah. It's not so really the double, My generation is the double boom. The, the double boom. boom. Yeah, we're the boom <laughs> bap. Boom boom. <laughs> well, no, you, we're the boomers' kids. But you're the dip after it. At least in terms of actually having kids, like when, you guys are the big dip. When to invest? Because I thought you guys were the big dip. We might even the be a bigger dip. dip. I think every generation is pretty big dip. I think every generation one. is dipping lower than the last one. Yeah. But the baby boomers, they just they were going at it, man. Or no, the the parents of the baby boomers were going at it, which yeah. they would have been the greatest generation, right? Yes, that would be the World War II generation. And then who are the people? The, they are the people who lived through all of the worst things yes. ever. My yeah. grandma yeah, was because one of those people. Now is really great too. So <laughs> no, this <laughs> okay, is bad. As we, this was our last podcast. Thought we Dude, were like. Had, we're pretty good right now. They like, had it's a pandemic, kind of screwed, right? But... The pandemic was the first thing. For that was them. the first yeah. thing. <laughs> oh God, I had to. Do, 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 well, that's what your your kids will be. That's basically their first thing. Yeah, I guess that, so. Right? They, right. they yeah. have to do that. Yeah. I guess. Well, I mean, we're on track, right? With the pandemic. And then... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, stop. And then oh, we're going to have go a ahead. Go ahead. depression. We'll go through the depression. And then yeah. we'll have a giant world war. Yeah. And then things will be great again. And then they're going to be... play this back in 20 years and be like, <laughs> again. he knew. Dean was a prophet. Dean <laughs> was a prophet. How did he know? There but, have been many things uh, foreseen on this podcast. Remember, you you mm-hmm. literally called the I called out Nico's the, the broken Nico break. Yeah. collarbone. Oh. Something special happens when you get in this room. Did anyone want to call out Ren's thumb? Oh, no one called out Ren. Ren broke his thumb <laughs> riding into a rail on a one wheel. <laughs> Dude, son of a dungeon curse. Every I, time filming starts, son of a so curse. Yes, so yes, this is now a. Fa- it's a consistent. There's a there's a trackable factor here. Every time we do green screen photography for Son of a Dungeon, somebody breaks a bone. I don't know why it is. Yeah, now that I think but about it's it, consistent. Yeah, I think that the strategy moving forward, if I can be so bold, is actually, <laughs> uh, and I know I have no say in this at all, but I think before we start next season, yeah, we got to just take someone, you know, someone who hasn't broken a bone yet. We just break their bones. Pre, <laughs> we just, just pre. We have a blood yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, the, the bone break. The, somebody yeah. on the crew, though, like yeah. somebody who's like unimportant. Yeah, the great. You know, break, we'll call it the, unimportant. We'll call it the great break. Jonah, you for instance. <laughs> Listen, man. If it saves the rest of us, I'll take that out. Yeah, somebody really? up in studio. Wow. Uh, somebody up in studio three. We break yeah. their bone. <laughs> yeah, right. that'll be fine. How small we have bone to are break we talking, it though? in studio four. Yeah, you must. Yeah, yeah. On a one wheel. Yeah, yeah, on a one wheel. But that that's also true. It has to be on some kind of EV. Electric mm-hmm. vehicle, one wheel, device. mountain bike, something along those lines. Yeah. So, how small of a bone are we talking? Because like, can we get away with like a pinky? Or I don't think you want to break that because yeah. you, there's no way to like yeah. cast it. Oh, so you yeah, actually want to? Yeah, that's know, worse. That's why mine doesn't bend. <laughs> okay. Oh, did yeah. you break your pinky, dude? It that's as much as it bends. So <gasps> it's really gross. Wait a second. That's about as much as mine bends. I don't know. No, no. You can probably bend it back though, straight. Like that's uh, okay. That's all it does. I was trying to question whether or not he actually broke it. Yeah, like, <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Hold on, we'll let the experts get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I think that like you know, just an arm or a leg or something like that. Arm or a leg. Well, those are easy to like. Those are easy fixes. Those are easy fixes. They're big. You know, well, it's got to be a. It's got to be like a nice clean fracture though. Yeah. You yeah. know, like we yeah. can't no shards. No, yes. We want just a nice clean break. surgery. Have clean all break. the breaks been surgery induced? Like they like yeah, surgery induced. 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 Surgery induced
Do we have bad bone break stories on the couch? Has have we been damaged? I've never broken a bone. You've never broken a bone. I actually do think you I broke my yeah. like one of my toe bones, and I didn't do anything about it. And now it just doesn't like my the front joint doesn't even move. Hey everyone, um, Jake here again, and I still haven't left the farm. Uh, you see, when I got here, I, I, I ran out of money, and then um, I wasn't able to leave. So now I've just been uploading stock images and uh, stock B-roll that I've been capturing myself onto Storyblocks for other people to use, hopefully as a way to generate enough money to get out of this place. Um, because if you, if you saw the last integration that I did, uh, I, I showed up at this farm. I didn't know about uh, things like uh, today's sponsor Storyblocks and how you don't actually need to travel to get high quality 4K B-roll. Why? Well, it's actually really simple. They have a virtually unlimited limited library of high quality 4K B-roll, incredibly robust and beautiful images, audio assets, motion graphics, after effects templates, and more. And you can get all of it royalty free to use in whatever projects you want through their unlimited all access plan. Had I known that, that would have saved me a lot of time and money. And you know, it's always good to do that when you're in a creative process, then you can put more time into your timeline, into your project, into the quality of that project, and uh, not have to blow your video budget coming out to a farm. And you know what the funniest thing is, is we use Storyblocks every day at Corridor, and I could have just asked one of the other guys to say, hey, uh, I need some farm B-roll for a video project I'm working on, where should I get it? And they would have said, yo, go to Storyblocks. And I would have said, how do I get there? And they would have said, click the link in the description below, or go to storyblocks.com slash CorridorCast, and you can get everything you need. Uh, anyways, let's get back to the podcast. It's like fused. So that's What's it worse. like having perfect bones, Dean? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Ren has weak baby bones. He has got baby, and, he's got weak baby bones. Yeah. And he, I mean, he's very clear about that. He has a great story about trying to, when he was a kid, trying to pick up the book off the top shelf at a library and it just broke his wrist. <laughs> no, what? Ren has broken like 14 bones. The, the, the first kid yeah. to injure oh, himself studying. Gosh. Like, Yeah. He was studying so hard. Dude. But oh, uh, if we lived in laughing. an era before doctors, he would have died a long time ago. <laughs> I think he also did karate and tried to karate chop a kid and broke a bone. <laughs> I didn't realize it really was that. Does he it, just has pretty brittle bones. That I, sucks. Wow. Well, he needs to stop he, breaking them. It though, might. It's, it's either that he has brittle bones or that Ren is like a daredevil. Yeah, I mean, he does it's a sign it. of a life well lived. He's got yeah. soft bones. <laughs> but that guy takes... I mean, Ren's wife is like... I always say this. His wife is like a... Like the wives of the t like test pilots or yeah. <laughs> like the uh, astronauts, right? Like yeah. she's just sitting at home waiting for the call. Yeah, yeah. you know. My uh, my mom was a nurse actually in the same way because Ren's wife is is a nurse, and like she would always downplay my injuries because she was a nurse. She's mm -hmm. probably listening to this. Like I love you, mm -hmm. I appreciate you, but like I will remember like I would get stupid injured, and she would just be like, "Oh, it'll be fine." Like she just knew because she did know, It'd you know. Fine. And like I broke my arm snowboarding at my friend's house and I sat at my friend's kitchen table for like an hour and a half because my mom was like not rushed to get there. No, oh, they God. like told they told like th she asked over the phone. She's like, oh, so like, what's the arm look like? They like described it. She's like, yeah, that's a green stick fracture. Like, he's totally fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll, fine. I'm going to finish my shift and then I'll come. Oh, yeah. my and God. I was, like, I was just sitting there like. By the way, we do twelve-hour shifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they're so hardcore. But you turned out you turned out all right. Everything works. In fact, I did just recommend that we should break someone else's bones. So <laughs> clearly, wow. I'm a really well-adjusted person. How do we want to go about this? <laughs> Let's about talk about this in bone? practical in practical they terms. They can't know what's gonna happen. <gasps> okay, they can't know. No, we'll have I them think sign a waiver. Reward, Dude. like reward. In fact, we'll have them. <gasps> we'll put the waiver down. We'll put it at a nice wooden table. Okay. And then we'll have them reach out and they'll sign the waiver. And then as they sign the waiver, as soon as the <laughs> pen comes off the paper, yeah. a mechanism will drop and Such as snap a guillotine? Their, fore, their forearm. Like, Guillotines and seize, Is this dude? how we rebuild the guillotine? We do yeah. have the blade. We'll, 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 we'll make the blade so it's not yeah, just sharp. It. And then just yeah. Make it then, safe. Yeah. <laughs> make it safe. We don't want to hurt okay, anyone. Okay, we'll set here. up two wooden tables with a gap in the middle. Oh, wow. And then they'll have to slide their arm across the gap 
And then they'll be blindfolded, of course. And then they'll sign. And then as soon as that pen comes off, boom. Oh, so snap. it's just random. It's snap just whoever decided. Well, you're honestly, snap in a way, you're punishing like the person who's like most ahead of the curve on like, oh, I'm going to get ahead. Go I'm get her. Sign this waiver. Well, I feel like I, maybe we should be the maybe, last. Maybe, maybe we last do it person. at random. I think that maybe it's a lottery system in the sense that like we make it public knowledge that someone's going to break their arm. Russian and then, style. yeah, and then we go, if you're willing, like, let us know. And we have like a list and then we just roll a dice, whatever it says. Yeah. We have a week to how do we random. Like, no one, Wait, no what if we do this willing. the old school way and we vet out like the miscreants of the group, you know, oh, no. the, 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 <laughs> the drifters and the skulkers. Yeah. And we find we find them. What what I mean, what labels somebody a, a miscreant? I don't know. When yeah, I walked in this morning, digital. Jake was hanging out by a dumpster. So yeah, I yeah, was. You would be on, that on the list. I might be on the list. I'm not. Look, I'm not absolved of anything here. I I might be on that list. I think tattoos puts you on puts tattoos. You on the list. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'm clean, but you know, no, I, I hear you. my my friend's dad. I was up north uh, for the Fourth of July, and my friend's dad was like kind of drunk, and he was like. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust anything this guy says. He's got tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, talk about a generational gap. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, that was a generational gap. Is that, that for yeah, sure? Baby boomer. Mm -hmm. no? yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Damn hippie, old Dave. Imagine I love somebody Dave. calling Jake a hippie. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> to, to Dave, I'm a hippie for God, sure. Man. Wow. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's a legend. Good old Dave. Love yeah. that guy. Yeah, love that guy. <laughs> Shout out to you, Dave. <laughs> Shout out, Dave. <laughs> but anyway, back to breaking people's arms. <sighs> right. So that's how we're going to go about it. Um, maybe we'll let the commenters decide. Yeah. yeah. They can figure well, it out. Who do you guys want to see break their forearm? Green light page. Green, green light, light page. Oh, green green light. Light. Producer <laughs> points. And all the, producer points all the, the vote for all the break. All the money that's worth those points will go to that person's medical bill. Oh, man. Here we go. And whatever's left over, they get to keep. I forgot there's How medical bills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard about the privatized healthcare system? Yeah. We can talk about it on a different podcast. That's a different podcast. We can go into that if you guys want to. <laughs> there are arguments on both sides. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give, I'm not going to say where I stand, but I'll give you the arguments. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of son of a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, wait, first, though, I want to talk about this Thor Ragnarok. Oh. So Jonah, cool yeah, Jonah and Fenner went to see it last night. I don't know if you've seen it. Dean. I see. I okay, saw it. so but there I was snapped a, a little picture, and in the credits, I saw a name, and that name was Fenner Rockcliffe. Oh, they didn't the, do the full name. The, okay. They didn't do the full name. What? No, they didn't. What? They didn't do the full no, name. No, I mean well, first and last. I know, but I oh, wanted that. Names. Oh, the what's your middle name? Thomas. Thomas. Lemers. And social, social security. Social. <laughs> Social insurance. <laughs> Social insurance. So S I N. Wait, yeah, S I N. Oh, you yeah. were under a Wait, category yeah. labeled shots. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> Worked on shots. I'm Worked not Canadian shots. Fenner, but my great grandfather was. Oh. Oh, well, he oh, was yeah. born in, in Rainy River, which is, anyways. Yeah, you we'll guys go like northern, this. northern. We'll go into that after this. Yeah. Yeah, I want to hear about Thor. Northeast. Yeah. He knew the real Thor. Probably. The real historical <laughs> Thor. Yeah. Freaking Odinson up there. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, I worked on the compositing team at Weta on it. So VFX credits are always super weird because like some of the studios there, they had like compositing credits, but then what is just said shots for whatever reason. So I think that's cool. Or it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it's more vague and vague yeah. is cool. Yeah. yeah. So and vague yeah, it is. was, man, it was such a cool project to work on. I, uh, yeah, loved it. It's probably one of my favorite projects I've ever done. It was extremely Fenner cool. Fenner almost stayed at Weta until the movie was done before yeah. he came here. He, yeah, it was like I had, a, I had to call Jake and be like, dude, they like they don't want me to leave because like the project because of COVID, like so many projects got delayed. And I was supposed to be wrapped um by the time my Weta contract ended, but the project pushed and then my contract was ending. And so they were like, Hey, can you stay? And I was like, No, I Going to Corridor. Sorry, so, I got so, another gig. Yeah. Are you? Oh, sorry. I was. Just, are you allowed to talk about the shots that you worked on? Or uh, I, I don't know. I actually don't. I don't. I think it's. I think uh, he the worked on some cool cool shots. Yeah. So when he's out when, and you don't yeah. work there anymore. Yeah. When you look at the movie with the good shots, those are the ones that Fenner did. There you go. <laughs> just when you yeah. see a shot that's real tasty. Yeah, all those shots of Chris it. Hemsworth looking even beefier than the before, Dude, the that's beefiest. all Fenner. You can't break those bones. They actually those modeled... Yeah, they bones. just did a photo scan of Fenner. <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. they modeled 
Chris's body off of Fenner's. That's the greatest yeah. compliment I've ever received in my entire <laughs> life, dude. <laughs> Could yeah, because that guy's sh- crazy shredded, man. man. He's just like consistently through every movie gotten more and more jacked. Like you were saying his stunt double wrote like some like... Yeah, I don't know. Have you, yeah, he basically, one of his stunt team was in preparation for this movie, was interviewed, kind of like spoke out, basically saying like, I love Chris Hemsworth, but what he's putting me through is like genuinely difficult because he's getting so huge that yeah. my job to keep up with his frame is like, difficult and Stop they don't have the same, the same resources yeah <laughs> oh. but but i can just kind of see it because i'm sure chris hemsworth has like the biggest team behind him that's like you Center know fit, personal yeah. training whatever it is yeah his own company or whatever but it uh you know they put him on his diet he's got personal chefs he's got you diet know, diets and, and, and personal chefs and and supplements yeah, yeah. <laughs> supplements and dude, weights dude he's supplemented up yeah dude. So. <laughs> got a lot of supplements he's that sucked guy. up so yeah man it's i mean i'm sure it's probably i would imagine a little bit harder for his stunt performer to have the same access to all that stuff oh yeah but great he's, movie though i dude i loved it like i think people have a lot of marvel burnout and so I went in with super low expectations because I was feeling that way. Like I haven't loved a lot of the recent Marvel stuff. So I think that was the best way to go into it. I was just like, whatever. And then I was like, it was great. I agree. That is the best way to go into any like modern big blockbuster superhero movie, whatever. It's like just, and this sounds awful, but just like lower your expectations and you'll have a great time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Which know? sucks kind of, but also it was awesome. Because the thing is the movies are still amazing visual feasts they're like have you know a-list actors and crazy action and, the and sound they're design. fun sound design sound design gets so overlooked dude there's so a, overlooked jake there's the sickest sound design moment where they go from full-on like the adobe atmos stereo just to all of a sudden it goes to mono in the theater really? and it's you're just like what just happened yeah and it's so cool people don't like think about it yeah but it there's so much work and design and style and art that goes into it and you're just you sit down and you're like, oh, the visuals and the visuals and the actor and the actresses. And But meanwhile, the entire time, there's like this perfectly leveled, balanced orchestra going on behind you. Music, design, elements. Yeah. All that stuff. There's actually... And it's so crunchy and crispy when you're in the theater. Yeah. To, hmm. to detour into uh, Dune, there's an amazing... Uh, documentary that the Warner Brothers YouTube channel put out about the sound design so of good. Dune and it was they went all out they like went out to the desert and were for the thumpers which uh, have you, you seen the movie where I've seen parts of it parts I, of I it. kept trying to watch it on HBO Max and it kept it would start and then oh. give me like three minutes and oh. then it would stop and I, I did that for the basically the first act the perfect cinematic experience <laughs> the way that it was made me intended. feel better about corridor digital.com yeah. <laughs> i'll just put it that way but the th- is universal. there's uh, these things called thumpers in the movie which is how they attract the okay. the giant worms and like they actually went out to death valley just to like slam these things on the really? ground and record it in so the sand awesome really because the whole movie is like uh like the sound is the main like kind of what you're saying is like the sound is the main character yeah. like the score and right. the sound design and i think even hans zimmer almost was like i'm just gonna do the sound design for the movie because yeah. the score is like so embedded in sure. the like sonic landscape of that yeah, so good man and uh yeah i think it is definitely like an underrated thing but these marvel movies i mean also have i love old movies i love watching old movies um but the sound design is so shrill yeah on most of them you find one that has good sound design and it's it's a keeper man yeah yeah and some some of them were able to pull it off and and i know that there's been remasterings and things like that over time but yeah um yeah that's the one drawback they should do like a beatles you know that uh what was it love the beatles album where they remastered all the songs in stereo they should do something like that for a bunch of classics we um we actually just reviewed the first like the punch for punch witcher short with sound design today yes dude like there were some shots in that where it's like oh, i don't know if this works like because it's all you know rubber foam weapons and stuff for... i think we need you to do two two more shots yeah <laughs> i think so I mean, I, there's a couple in there i was like i feel like those rings should be glowing yeah, yeah. or there, there's one shot where there's no rings on his fingers 
Yeah, that's okay. We can do those. Okay. <laughs> those aren't those ones aren't crazy. And then there's one. Sorry, I'm just gonna finish this. That's okay. That's cool. There's one where just, there's a halberd and the halberd is bent. I know. You just need to cut it and then move it. Yeah. And track it. Just. <laughs> But yeah, but um, they sound great. Well, <laughs> what I was gonna say is those weapons, like that was the biggest thing that stood out for me in our previous cuts without sound, is they feel foamy because there is yeah, there's the halberd that's a bit you know limp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what kind of helps sell that is like seeing the wep like the weapon drops and then there's like a metal clang sound. Yeah. And it helps you. It helps that believability. Oh, a thousand percent. It was the same thing when I'm working on Thor. I remember watching a rough cut of it, and I was like, oh, I don't know if this like fight sequence works at all and then you see it in the movie with the sound design there's like lightning cracks and yeah because like, so much of it is energy and yeah like, and you're like this is awesome <laughs> which i can't imagine for those actors i mean at this point it's like they're basically in like the george lucas prequels like just standing on a blue screen mm -hmm. waving their hands around being like i guess this will look cool later especially i mean to multiverse of madness dr strange and and uh, uh scarlet witch all of what they're doing is just waving their hands around yeah. and making like weird shapes. The behind the scenes looks so goofy because it's just someone doing this like on a blue screen. You're like, what is like? that's like, honestly, and this sound like, obviously they're getting paid millions of dollars, whatever, but that's where acting is like, they, they're professionals, you yeah. know, they're like, they're, they're at work doing those movies yeah. and uh, yeah, big respect to them. Yeah. But, you yeah. got to believe it yourself. Yeah. That's, that's rule number one. I mean, we were filming all week and we're filming in front of this giant green screen, but you have to take that moment before each take and just go, okay, I'm not here anymore. I am in the place that we've created in our minds and I am only there and just, and, and it can be hard to do, but, uh, it's, it's worth it when you can, when you can do that and then, you know, whether it's, uh, the post or whether it's additional footage and then that you know, whether it's things off screen makes the universe feel bigger and then sound design comes in and then that makes the universe feel more complete. And then all of a sudden it starts to take on this totally different picture than just the raw footage. Yeah. Does Do it, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. Does it feel, you know, cause we were talking about how Dr. Strange, you're just in standing in front of a green screen. You are standing in front of a green screen, but does it help your performance to be able to look across and see that immersive mm. world behind you? Cause I feel that's like that's, Huh? Wow, it's a great question. Mind melt um, because that's a little different, right? You you get that real world reference, and that's different than a volume where it is really behind you. It's like kind of the perfect medium. Does that affect your performance? How does that affect your performance? It definitely does, and it definitely helps uh, to see the the environment that you're in. But also sometimes it's it's more useful for just understanding where things are spatially, and then once you understand okay that thing that we talked about is there and that thing that we talked about is there then i my technique is to i kind of just turn away from the screen at that point once i understand where everything is spatially cuz then i can just see it you know i can just see it in my head and i go okay um that's there that's there and then you you just you just act as if it's there um it's weird it's it's kind of you have to separate your your normal sense of um being in normal reality which is we're constantly like trying to grasp okay what read the room who's doing this who's doing that what's somebody saying to you what's what are the objects you're maybe you're driving down the road you know you gotta we're, we're so honed in on focusing on what our actual reality is when you consciously try to break that that can it, it just takes a little getting used to yeah yeah i i thought about I talked to Clint once. He said he took this acting class, which was crazy. And they were like pretending to be animals and stuff. Yeah. And uh, people might remember the the Lion King video where he was mm -hmm. doing all the mocap for the animals. And like Clint commits 1000% to that kind of stuff. And um, I just, after seeing that, what you're saying right now, I like, I'm like, I kind of want to take an acting class. Just like feel it out you know because we just sit behind our desks all day and we get like limp little editor's wrists and... editor wrists yeah Weak no bones. it's good it's good to do <laughs> soft bones soft, soft, bones. soft, soft bones. bones yeah it's good to do it helps you understand uh what you're looking for when you're filming or directing something and then on the other side my being a producer primarily um it helps me act better because i can i know what 
I know what the crew is looking for too, you know? And so I just think understanding the more well-rounded you are, the better, the mm-hmm. better you'll be as an artist, I think completely. You know, um, that reminds me of a conversation I was having with Mark today. Um, I don't want to speak for him, but like, I was so curious about how he performs. Cause like you're saying, like as creators, you sometimes you're a little behind. And that's Markiplier for people. That's Markiplier. The big name the intern. drop. On that first the name intern, basis. The intern. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Intern. Um, Not but name drop. I was like, hey, man, you've Mark been such, the intern. Yeah. You've been such a joy to shoot with. Like, how do you, how do you improv? How do you, what, what is your process? And like, cause I'm, I'm really obsessed with that. Like, to be able to, he is so on all the time. Every take is good in a different way. And I'm not saying that we don't have okay. that but he's a phenomenal actor. yeah yeah and i was like how do you do it dude? and he he took improv classes to your point like oh, cool. he he took it seriously man like he loves yeah he loves the performance part of it and that was actually really cool he was like talking about how he wants to bring like an improv teacher to corridor yeah and like cool. how fun would that be if yeah. we took a day I, dude like, i would love that yeah man i, I think remember, um, um oh sorry go ahead well i was just gonna say i think jordan allen and matt cairns both come from an acting background and uh i know I think both of them have done improv and uh, yeah, they have that same muscle, which is like, you just go with it. Yeah. It's the yes. And like mentality. Yeah. You, yeah and you gotta be, you gotta be willing to get weird with it, you know? Oh and, yeah. And that's just how it is. Um, Clint used to have these parties. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stupidest <laughs> LA thing ever. I'm, just, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's a funny story. He used to have these parties um, and we would do improv at the parties. So everyone would be sitting around and then, you know, a few people would get in the middle and then there'd be a prompt and then you had to act it out. And it was just kind of this funny show that the group would sort of collectively put on for everyone else. It was really fun. Uh, Yeah. And it's like, it's such a, like to, to go see, improv is one thing sometimes it can be very hard to watch but like doing it with your friends or whiskey helps (laughs) but like doing with your friends or uh even like using it i mean honestly son of a dungeon like D &D is kind of a game of improv in a lot of ways and you guys are using that as a as a uh jumping off point for like telling stories right yeah and um it's just it's such a generative process because it's you're committing to the collaborative environment. It's not like, like the, the requirement is that you lose your ego. The requirement is that you're like, okay, I'll throw out my idea, but then I'm going to jump on somebody else's idea. And it's like, you're not like, I'm no, like, totally. I really want to do it. Yeah, Cause if yeah. you're sitting in the middle of a sketch and everybody's like, Oh, it's a hospital. And you're like, no, it's uh, a, <laughs> yeah. we're at Michael the Scott. police station. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's that's one of the best most fun things about it. Um and I and obviously there's that fall off line which is pretty clear, you know, when you get when you get too deep into improv or when you get too deep into D&D culture, the fall off can be really hard and then there's sort of this subculture underneath it that's really obsessed with that the gameplay mechanics and the other elements and stuff, but yeah. Generally, even people who are really into the subculture, if you can keep the general audience entertained with it then they're going to like that too. So yeah, that's what we try to do with that show is go more for the, in, in, in season two, we're going even harder in that direction. Like we don't need to know how they level up. Nobody cares. I mean, some yeah. people care, but it doesn't matter. The people that care, they probably know they understand it. Right. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it's, it doesn't really matter. You know, like we knew that and that helped drive the story. But once it's not like you need to know what was in the script versus what was improvised. All you need to know is what was in the four frames that you saw and was it connected to the other parts and was that entertaining? Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to focus on that. Um, and I think it's better this year than it was last year on that alone, but then there's all these other elements that are going to come through. I mean, obviously the visual effects, uh, the more complete music and composition. Uh, we, we, hopefully we can send it off to Kevin to do mastering uh, for the sound design. Um, and then there's nine episodes, deeper story. Um, I think more, com- we're, we were more comfortable as players too, and, and not just in character, but also in understanding, okay, when the editors cut this together, this is going to be more efficient for me to say what I'm doing like this, 
versus to, for me to say what I'm doing like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so all of those things I think are coming together in season two. So hopefully people like it. Um, I'm super excited for it, man. Yeah. I, mean, I like, am too. I am really excited for it. If if it can drive more subs and people really like it, then we'll keep the show going and and it'll be it'll be awesome. And that's what I that's what I hope happens. And maybe we'll get a freaking LED wall Dude, a volume set up. Would be, mini volume. Would be pretty mini sick. Volume. We need more space, guys. Yeah. yeah. How's we're the getting, space problem been, honestly? We're getting a lot of a lot of people in here, people, man. Yeah. A lot of people. But I feel like uh, upstairs it's is good, nice. man. You know, I like I'll always be pushing the bunk desks. Once we get <laughs> the bunk desks. <laughs> once, we, once we get too many people, you just put another desk on top and the other person there sits you on your shoulders. That's yeah. efficient, man. And yeah. then you're good. Yeah. You know? and, and then do we have some kind of elevator system that brings them up? No, they just hop on your shoulders. Oh, they just hop on your shoulder. Yeah. Okay, great. Exactly. It's okay. Dean, you, do you need a new chair? Do I need a new chair? Yeah. It is like... He just needs the, a friend to sit on. Would you like a new chair? It is like the perfect chair for my height. Like the arm rests. We can get are the like, same model. Give me the... Well, I mean, you know, it I th- works. I think you should get a new chair. It, you know, if that's in the cards, man... It's in the cards. You we know, can get, you, If you behave can, yourself. If you know, if you sacrifice a bone or two, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you is can that, have any oh. chair you want. If you sacrifice, see, a bone this is two. the thing with the bone. It's like bones. you could, like I think a better system is bone a throw. reward system. Like if, if somebody volunteers up their bone, they get something nice. You know, yeah, get something real nice. Yeah, you know, new lens. Mm. You know, get a subscription to Houdini or something. You know, subscription to Quarter Digital. Quarter Digital. But what are you? Are you um, are you trying to expand? Are we trying to break an, a, a, the wall into that space so it takes over this whole block? What's your vision, man? You seem like you have a vision. I would love to stay in this building. Um, now, Stress Level Zero has three other units in this building. There's only six total, and then there's one other one. Um, so, you know, I don't want to cause any rifts or anything. Um, we love this building. We have a ton of history here. So obviously that would be our first option. We got, we got closets, man. We could put some yeah. people in there. Well, and then we every, fit like every, three people. In everyone's the kind of <laughs> situated there where they live based on, you know, this location being here. So if we went somewhere else, probably wouldn't want to go too far. Um, but it's just then this the cost factor comes up, you know. I mean, we still rent this building. We we we've been a company for twelve years, and we don't have we still rent our built now. A lot of companies do that, but it's for like specific purposes. Whereas this one, we just haven't bought a building because they're so damn expensive. And so it's it is a hindering factor. I think there's a lot of benefits to being where we are. But one of the hindering factors is just simply, you know, if we were literally anywhere else in the country other than Chicago or New York, we could have 10,000 square feet of studio space, probably on 10 acres. Yeah. And you can I mean, film whatever backlots, sets, random. Sick. We could yeah. also... But you wouldn't have, you know, oh, hey, I'm just going to be in town. Can I come on, be on VFX Artist React? And can, oh, can you just guys want to come? And there's so there's a trade-off. Yeah. Um, but... We definitely, I'm feeling the pinch spatially. I'm feeling the pinch. We could, you know, there's abandoned parts of LA. We could set up like a corridor encampment, I think. <laughs> Dude, and just take corridor it over. City. Just connect, get some, like, get some a, Jennies a out there it, that'll run know? the computers. And yeah. like, we could just. Here's kinda... a wacky idea. Do you, do you think we could pay a bunch of homeless people to like take over a certain area and then claim. Clear it out for dominance us. Dominance over Break it. Break some bones yeah. for us. And then yeah, tell and the could... city that. No, we would be employing space more, now. We would be employing people, yeah. Yeah. giving people jobs, and then, giving people and work. Then, unfortunately, the developer world is too racketed into the city government, so that would never happen. But for other reasons too. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for other reasons too. Sure, yeah. fair. Yeah, I think that it would be really cool to have a bigger space. Like I think that one of the things we run into is when when there's like one thing happening in the studio it's right. super productive but when there's like multiple things happening exactly you just start yeah. you just don't have the floor space because i mean if we had multiple different 
units where we could set up different stages on each unit. Yeah. Then we could have one that's a volume. We could have one that's Son of a Dungeon. We could have one that's VFX Artist React. I mean, yeah. and those could just be set up. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could, you could just use them. Dude, it's so funny. We used to, we were down here and then we're like, we need quiet space. So we opened up Studio 3. And then right. now Studio right. 3 is never quiet because right. yeah. we're filming things Dude, up there all the time. you filming things like, guys, quiet, please, we're filming. <laughs> guys, guys. Yeah. I have it's nowhere like, to film. They're, they have a giant s- s- freaking set down yeah, here. Yeah, we've taken over a giant production. square feet of the studio. It's a, it's Somebody's a in the next room yeah. filming yeah, something. Yeah, and then even like tomorrow we're coming in and we're like, okay, let's get in early. So yeah, we can it's be like, like it's, okay, they're yeah. shooting this and then we're going to shoot right after in their same setup and then they're shooting downstairs. It's just a content I into, stream. I came into the room that I stay at when I'm here and Chase was in there filming today. <laughs> Chase, yeah. Chase was in the bed, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey Chase. Yeah, dude, everybody's got a camera. Everybody's filming something. It's like you want you want more space, but part of you worries that it you lose some of that charm, you know? Oh, if I, we, I thought that it, that's not true cuz oh, I really? thought that when we were in, <laughs> when we were in Studio 4, I was like we're going to lose some of that like newsroom kind of feel and it like we just you it fills it's infectious. Like, the amount of space you get. It will fill that space. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like I think a, there's it's a, like a project timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think there's a big like, I don't know, discussion to be had there of like intentional growth versus just like trying to chase that too. Right. Because if you're like, okay, we just got to expand and you expand, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we have to fill this space rather than being like, okay, we have filled this current space. We need more space. Rather. Can, yeah. It's yeah. a hard balance because you kind of in some ways have to be preemptive to like stay on top of things but then you can almost jump the gun in some ways and then i think in when you're doing that i think that's when you do lose a bit of the magic yeah no absolutely yeah growth for the sake of growth i don't think is healthy for any sort of just anything really like i think you have to have very intentional growth with any sort of especially creative fields like i think that's kind of honestly some of the like to go back to marvel some of the marvel burnout I yeah. think we were seeing like phase one was like 12 hours of content and phase yeah. four is already at like 58 or something. Yeah. And no, it doesn't feel like it has any direction. Yeah. It's sort of the same amount of magic has now been spread out to all this mm-hmm. content, you know? And yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree with you. To me, it's that's like, way more important than anything else. Yeah. It's, especially in our industry. We're not just making shoes or whatever where we go, oh, well, people want more shoes make more shoes yeah you know we're we're making yeah. these little stories and we're crafting these little shows and they have timelines and they have story and they have through lines and they have there's novelty to them and we're we're pushing the boundaries here we're pushing the boundaries there that to me is way more fun enjoyable and makes it worth it than you know just like oh well let's just produce more of this thing or more of that thing um yeah and a bigger team means more right hierarchy and and... you can very easily fall into those pitfalls mm-hmm. of going well it, you know it made sense but now well for i'll give you an example punch for punch we've got four episodes we think they're really good the whole idea behind that process was to submit that to netflix with the hope that they pick it up for an actual run on the platform now, if they pick it up for a run on the platform, smallest case scenario, they're going to buy 12. They've already bought four. So then they buy eight more. So now you go, and even if they tripled the budget from what it was, well, okay, so now you've dedicated team that's just doing that show for what, basically a year is basically how long it would take to produce that. And then now, so now you have what, you know, five more full-time people, four more full-time people that are just working on that show. And then, and so you have to pick, you have to pick where you want to put your creative points mm-hmm. because if you just, I'm not saying we we're, we won't do that, but at the same time, there's the consideration of saying, okay, well, is that what we want to do? Is that yeah. what we want to do? Is that where we want to put, or would it be would it be more interesting to say, well, what, what are, what are some of these other things that, that we can do? You know, what, when, what, like, yeah. what, can we do another boss town dynamics? Can we do another, you know, have we done one of those in a while? We, I, I mean, yeah, it's you like know. the idea of like re- refinement versus expansion. It's yeah. like, do you stick with what you're doing and make it like the best version of itself? Or do you try to 
branch out and create more and potentially pick up new viewership, new audiences, that sort of thing, and just do more versus doing less but doing it better. Yeah, and our original pitfall on Corridor was we literally had no repetition. It was there was none. It was I remember this making I don't know, pick pick a video, dubstep guns, whatever. One of these old videos that did really well at the time. And then we wouldn't touch them again because we go, oh, well, that video did great. We don't, we already did that concept. And, and we were so focused on just the newest, craziest idea we could do. We had no concept of, well, you, you, it's kind of hard to do that. Maybe you want to do another one yeah. and, and, and it picks up some traction and gain some momentum and, and, and repeat the process so you can continue, you know, just having, having a profession. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so that was something we had to learn. Uh, but I also have always been very adverse to the opposite problem, which is just, you know, formulating, making everything formulaic and then yeah. I think squeezing that's, out that creativity. Like in the U S I think that's the reason we always lean towards that. Cause it's, it's so easy to quantify that. Like, okay, we grew this much mm-hmm. and it, you know, we hit, hired these people and this much profit and all that stuff. It's almost but, like we don't even question it. Yeah, we don't even what, question its value. What Fenner's sure. saying is like w- the value that, again, is provided to us creatively right. when you do those projects to the audience and and their like emotional attachment to it. It's like that stuff. You, that's not you can't put that on a spreadsheet. You can't yeah. like you know what I mean. So it's such a. But like you're saying, it is. It has to be a balance because it can't just be like totally. Right. You know. It's own. Every, you got to make it for yourself, time. but other people have to like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If it's too niche, yeah. you can't keep doing it. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. It's a, it's such a hard balance to strike too, of just being like, okay, this is super fulfilling for myself, but people actually do want to watch this. <laughs> like right. you have to find that balance. And that's like, I don't know. It's, it's been a really interesting challenge with coming here as well. Just like, cause it's my first time doing like, content creation that's going into the world kind of and that's yeah. i don't know it's really cool really like more of you is on the line rather yeah than, totally yeah. man it's like you know with like with thor like uh natalie was saying she was like oh i'm sorry i said like mean things about it i was like all right it's not my movie <laughs> like, I, I don't mind like <laughs> How could you? yeah it's like it's you know you always have that kind of get out of jail free card you're like oh it's not my movie but if it's like a project at corridor you're like well, that's mine. Like I'm, I put yeah. that baby out into the universe, and that's that will always be more fulfilling than being one of, even if you're the director, one of a thousand names yeah. is like, you know, Peter just made this amazing short yeah. film. Dude, wow. Yeah, Scooty. you got to talk about Scooty. That and is, like, I want to bring that's him, him. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's him. Anyways, and go so, watch Scooty. It's so good. Stop yeah. this and go, and the, but then come back. Come back in 19 <laughs> minutes. Play it in the in the corner. Yeah, I've, I've rewatched Scooty, I think probably like five six times. Yeah, yeah. It's and so the, good. Score the score. Talk about sound design. The score. Dude. Yeah, that's yeah. a. I mean, that's a great example of like he put time into that man. That was three years of effort, and it could have been something that was like just super niche. You know, when you hear the pitch for that, you're like, it's a scooter that comes to life, and they like and you're like what it's still pretty niche <laughs> yeah right but it's like it but was anything yeah. but it had enough refinement and enough love put into it over those three yeah. years that it was created something that was polished enough and had enough mass appeal that it is very like i don't I, everything i've seen about it is people love it and like, i find it very really, universal I f- it's like a cute yeah. main character yeah. it's like a it's like a fun story like it's uh yeah i think it's just it has like specificity and universality yeah. i think like another great example is ian hubert who made his short film I, i'm dynamo thinking dream dynamo dream yeah. and um that so like that's 10 years right and yeah wow again it's like you look at that you're like okay this looks like a hollywood film but this was one guy yeah which is you know first of all like the appeal of 3d and like getting into it this year has been just like, Oh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And I think in the future, we're going to see a lot more of these kinds of projects where it's just, somebody is like, I'm going to spend years of my life (laughs) on my own to make this tiny thing. Mm -hmm. But it is like, so like you watch those and it's like so distilled 
in terms of like the vision and the, the art that you're getting from it. It's like, it's worth, it is worth that, you know, 10 X totally past a, you know, yeah. Marvel movie or something, you know, because it's like, so yeah, it's refined. hard to compare it to a Marvel movie. It's, it's a different thing. Yeah. It's a different thing. And I think you have to look at it with a different eye and yeah. appreciate it for what it is. Cause yeah, there's the cutting edge of using technology that's available to you. Obviously time is a huge factor. That's the one thing you don't get back. Yeah. Um, but if you can do something that's really eye catching and novel and pushes the art form further, then, you know, that's, that's a contribution to what someone will do the next time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's also, it's a life well lived. Like if you can, I feel, you know, that's how I feel. It's like, if you could find something to do all day that you like doing, yeah. you know, because it's like, that's, you know, you work a job that's eight hours of your day. That's most of your life. Uh, it has to be something that you enjoy. And it, you know, if you're, you know, we're so super lucky, lucky. <laughs> lucky to be here Crazy and lucky. just screwing around, making fun stuff. <laughs> and like, if you get to make something with your hands, I know we're clicking on mouses and stuff, but it's like, we're making this stuff with our, with our hands, bones. you know, soft with our soft with our little soft baby bones. hands. But, um, yeah, there's, you know, a lot of people out there, even in creative industries who are, you know, sitting behind a desk. Like I've, I've had that job, you know, where I'm just sitting behind a desk. Somebody's telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm, I was just happy to be like editing videos, but I was like, this is, I'm just, I'm a conduit for this other person. You know, it's like, I'm not in this yeah, it's, product. Joan and I were actually talking about this this morning. It's the concept of working with people versus working for someone, you know, yeah. like working for people versus working with people. And like, it was, it was super cool seeing Love and Thunder and being like, yeah. there's my name in the credits. And there's like 2,000 other names. Like we literally couldn't even yeah. find my name because we were like, oh, back. oh, there it is. Like, <laughs> and it's like, I'm stoked, man. I was, it was so rewarding working on that project. But I'm also like, I, a lot of people did that. Like, yeah. so whereas, you know, you see the, the credits for Scooty and it's like, Oh, there, cool. Or dude, the Stormtrooper video and the Batman video, it's like, yeah, here you go, guys. You yeah, know? Batman dude, video. Yeah, like Stormtroopers, way more fulfilling than Thor, which sounds weird. <laughs> like, Thor is so cool. I'm so happy that I got to do that. But also, Stormtroopers, like, that's kind of, you know, the baby we put out there. And yeah, the Batman video has been taken off. It's Batman? The second Life, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, no, taken oh, off YouTube. Taken yeah, it got off pulled of down. YouTube. Oh, I thought that it, yeah. no yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, the standalone cut uh, that we put on Corridor. Yeah. Oh, no. WB claimed it, and then I submitted an appeal, and then they and then they said no, and then I submitted a dispute, and then they, and now it's been removed, and now we have to start a legal process to get it back up online. What's, oh, what's the... Uh, we got Adam the West. So, so check this out. They're claiming... That under the fair use doctrine, we don't have a claim of fair use because they're claiming not the new Batman trailer footage. They're claiming the 60s, the audio only oh. from Adam West's voice from the 60s series. And you know what sucks? Oh, that's, they're, that's... Saying, they're saying because we own that, you guys didn't do enough originality with it. We we have a right to demonetize this or like take have, it down. Have it's they like, ever heard a rap song in their life? Right. Yeah. So so what I think heck? that this has been kind of an automated process because I yeah. submitted the last dispute at eleven thirty p.m. last Friday, mm -hmm. and within thirty minutes, it was manual takedown. Now, tell me what lawyer <laughs> is working for WB that was up. At eleven fifty nine, on a Friday, doing takedowns. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. There's no yeah. fucking way. What, <laughs> yeah. what well, also sucks <laughs> is Adam's family, like Adam yeah, West's family, it. reposed the video the and they loved it. Of the, the director, director of the it's film. like yeah. what? Like come right. on, man. And so I'm th missing the point. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have to pursue this, and it'll be kind of our oh, yeah. first one where we actually. I think what's probably going to happen is I'm going to submit the next dispute and then that's actually going to go to one of their lawyers and then yeah. one of their lawyers is going to go oh this is well that's how hollywood works is they just they take you right up to the line they're like we're going to take all the money you have like they'll take you right up to the line but if it's a ridiculous case they'll 
at the last like if you actually just stand your ground they'll be like oh yeah. crap uh, man, I, I guess guarantee some people watch that video and we're like man i should go check out the adam west series oh and okay. just yeah. only gave helps their them. money Which to is like, not improve the market yeah like the market for the original yeah. yeah no like literally if it like at least in the crew video the whole argument is like we're gonna you know bring adam west back yeah well the ai didn't watch that video <laughs> I, don't think the the AI, I don't think the ai that wb has posing as a manual person watched that video yeah so. that's ridiculous man so that's that's something we got to do next week um and then oh there's one more thing i wanted to talk about so mark had an idea mark the intern Good guy. You guys know Mark the intern. Mark uh, Marky Plier? Yeah. Marky e. Plier. I actually called I guess him he's that got a one time channel. by accident. He got very mad at me. <laughs> Marky Plier. I said Marky Plier, and he said, no. <laughs> he said, we don't do that, Jonah. No. And yeah. then you were like, shut up, intern. Yeah. <laughs> Slapped him around, made him fix the water jugs. There you go. Perfect. Uh, he had an idea. We create another channel. He called it Corridor Dump, but I called it. I call it corridor crude. What about or, corridor crap? Yeah, I, corridor, I, I corridor, corridor crap. crap. We talked about me and Mark talked corridor about this. Crap. Corridor, corridor crap was, was my corridor crap. That's pretty good with two P's. Oh, oh like French. Yeah, crap. crap. So hidden camera in the poop, <laughs> poop dungeon is that? <laughs> no, that would be an invasion of privacy. <laughs> you signed the waiver. Yeah, they signed the waiver. Some form Get their arms of broken conversion. afterwards. That would definitely be a criminal offense. Warner maybe. Brothers would take that video yeah. down for yeah. sure. <laughs> this is in poor taste. Right, so we're... anyways, the idea behind this channel is uh, anybody on the crew who wants to make something and upload it, uh, obviously outside of, you know, intentional Poop dungeon material. intentional <laughs> stuff that's inappropriate or like political <laughs> topics, things like that. But anybody who wants to make something creative and put it on there is welcome to. There's no release schedule there's nothing we 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 say to everybody. Hey, look, this is just a channel as an outlet for who's ever. But and I, I think that would be fun. I mean, you have those blender renders. You know, yeah. we've all got stupid ideas, and a lot of times maybe we don't make them because there's no outlet for them. Yeah, right. But what if we just did that, and then it was just a, it was just there and available. Yeah, I think there's. Fan. You know, we'll have uh, Matt. We'll do covers of of Toto songs. I think <laughs> you know with the whistle because there if you want with the to. slide whistle, yeah. the slide whistle. Dude. there could be like yeah, because there's weird antics and stuff that we get up to that never end up on anything but yeah. are filmed, and it's like that could just go up as like I don't know. Some I don't crap. even know, dude. I don't even know what <laughs> YouTube crap. crap. I don't know what YouTube shorts are, but they feel like YouTube. <laughs> they shorts. could be shorts. Too. I think it's a great idea. Like I think that when mark and i were talking about it like just to be able to work through things creatively and be able to have an audience is really important and like getting feedback is really important yeah and for the people like these young bucks here on the couch who <laughs> young bucks. youngest guys ever the youngest guys ever like you know we are privileged there to are be able literally to... no men younger than these three men right here <laughs> nope. um the youngest man alive we, we, we're super privileged to like have inherited a, a massive audience yeah um and that's like a really special experience like living that firsthand and to then be able to have like a channel where like you know you can just release something that you're passionate about that would be huge that'd be really huge well, and I, I think, think we um, should do it and it also leads to like experimentation more you know right. It's like the Pixar model. It's just like, you know, it's better to go and try something new than yeah. to not try it at all, even if it ends up weird. You yeah. Know? Like, Corridor you, Crap's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to nab that with the CMS before somebody it's takes it awesome, before this man. podcast comes out. So yeah. don't even try it. Oh, I've already <laughs> we taken already got it. you. Warner Brothers Actually, is already I should closing it. So I don't forget. Because what happened last time, I, we said we were, remember? Yeah. We said we were going to do something before a podcast came out, and then it came out, and we hadn't done it yet. It should be a, like, we have the yellow and black, like, flips from the corridor and corridor crew logos. It should just be a brown C. Oh, no. (laughs) Just brown and off brown. (laughs) Just brown and off brown. Yeah. Crap. Corridor crew. I like the idea that it's just, like, inverted colors. That'd be fun. It's kind of like the the B side of. of, of, I feel like the corridor crew crew and corridor are already inverted. So, so we invert the inversion. Jonah, you're fired. So we invert it. <laughs> you invert it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I I feel like there's definitely stuff that we get up to that should just 
be out there because some stuff like it's it's such a fun job because like every day you're probably gonna laugh your ass off about something oh, yeah and, i'm gonna post oh sorry yeah right. it's just and that stuff doesn't get out there and it's like stuff that would be f- funny to share like literally today when we were taking that thumbnail for daniel's crew video <laughs> we're all standing around praising this ball that's stuck to the ceiling and like <laughs> singing gregorian chants like <laughs> and i'm like yes, that's dude. like 15 second video just throw it up like whatever <laughs> yeah and like to to that point you know i think there's a vocal uh group on the website that sometimes get frustrated that the crew cuts are smaller or shorter and like super valid but i it's not that the stuff isn't good like we there is the content there but like when i'm crafting that story you have to understand that like to, in order to make it compelling and and interesting like there is stuff that just doesn't make sense for it to be in there even if it's funny and like it'd be really fun to just be able to release like two minute videos that are just like yeah just the goofs man like you know and goofs are awesome like i want to put them in there but if it it negatively affects like the meaning of the video then it's difficult for me to justify putting that in there having people say these episodes are too short is exactly what oh that's part of it that when they say that they mean the episode is the perfect language (laughs) they want because because what it is is you 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 saw the video, you loved it. You want more. You want another one. Yeah. No, what Why it is, is this journey have to end? I should, uh, yeah. What it's it is compliment. is that you watch this like a video. You were you're swept up in it, and then it ended, and you're just realize I'm sitting here on the toilet <laughs> in the poop dungeon. in my in my bathroom, right? With my take soft me back, bones. take me back to the escape <laughs> land. Take yeah. me back. No, no, it's great. Um, that's that's what you want. You you don't want to draw it out to the point where no one's saying that. You know, you you always want to leave a little something so that people come back. I've never looked at it that way, but thank you for giving me that perspective. But I'm very, I'm my harshest critic, so I just want everyone to be happy. Right. Well, you know, that so everyone that'll never happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's a bad way to live. Yeah. You well, can't try to make everybody happy all the time. It's a bad way to live. Yeah. But I hope everybody listening to this podcast is happy with the conversation, the the vibes that we're having. Yeah, with that, let's end with this. That. <laughs> Dean's got the perfect vibes right now. You're just vibing out. The first thing I... I, Wait, 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 where is it? Where is it? It's like we're yawning. (laughs) Was a lonesome whistle blowing And a youngin's dream of growing up to ride on a freight train well, Merle Haggard? Town, not knowing where I'm bound. Can't believe you can just and do no this. one could change my mind, but Mama, Mama tried. tried. Mama tried. One and only <laughs> rebel child from a family meek and mild. My mama seemed to know what lay in store. Lay in store. So I don't Thank my you. Sunday learning. Towards the bed I kept on turning. Tell mama couldn't hold me anymore. And I turned 21 in prison. Doing it for without parole. Another young person. No one could have me alive. Right, but mama tried. tried. Mama tried. Mama tried. Mama tried to raise me better. <laughs> so but her pleading I denied. That leaves only me to blame. Cause mama tried. Yeehaw! <laughs> If you Hell listen yeah, through that, brother. wow, thank you very much. So uh, when do we start the podcast? <sighs> Is it the pre-podcast? Have yeah. a great day, everybody. <laughs>